hey everybody, like you're all my friends. I want you to know I'm sick. I had this thing, it's scary, but we're all gonna be okay and just do the right thing. Hello everyone, I am here in Burlington, stuck in my home, like the rest of you. Hope you all are doing well and taking care of yourselves. Hope your families are healthy. Today we are going to talk to Todd Townsend, a builder from Williston, about his experience testing positive for COVID-19. It is real. It, it's real. I'm sick. It's scary. But I'm also here and I'm talking to you and, and, and I'm feeling better and better every day. I am a local artist, builder, carpenter. There's something emotionally and psychologically draining about this that is worse than any sickness I've ever had. I think it's because it's coming in tandem with all of these huge, bigger world issues that we're, we're not used to thinking about. Middle of March, I was on a job site. I was actually working on a job site up in Barrie. I started having really bad cold symptoms, mostly like congestion, sinus, pressure, headache. And that lasted for a good 10 days of just like a really nasty cold. So I left work early on a Friday because I was just exhausted. I woke up and it was like I had been crushed. I'd been run over and I had a slight fever really no cough, a little bit of a, of a sore throat. The pressure in my head, I felt like I'd just run a marathon. Like my, my muscles were all shot, my joints were shot. My breathing, which is really the thing that was scary, and I couldn't get through a sentence without having to like stop and take a huge breath, which didn't feel huge because your lungs, your lungs feel so constricted. My doctor said, without a doubt, like you need to get to a testing site right away. I pulled into the fairgrounds and there are like cones leading you to this contamination site with like white tents set up everywhere. I mean, it felt like that scene in ET. And then the test itself is a six inch long Q-tip that they put all the way up into your brain and then they spin it around for like 10 seconds. The next three days, I was sick as a dog. I got my positive test back for COVID-19, kind of lost it for a little bit. I called everybody in my family, had a long talk with my wife, emotionally and mentally, it was this huge hit. And then slowly, symptoms got better. That was the, the on the couch under a blanket week. There are symptoms that people weren't talking about for a really long time and aren't talking about and I'm still not talking about. Like, I haven't been able to taste anything for three weeks. I had severe gastrointestinal issues for like a week and a half and those are definitely lingering. It lingers and, and there's no other way to describe it other than the term lingering. So it's not like a normal cold or flu where it goes up, it comes back down, and then you're better. It's like it goes up, comes down, goes up higher, comes down lower, goes up, comes down, and it does this thing all the way through. I mean, the health department asked me the same thing. Where'd you get it? Where do you think you got it? We need to trace it. My fellow workers, none of them tested positive. Could have gotten it from any number of places. It's been really scary to think about getting my wife sick. I have family members with pre-existing conditions. My dad just survived cancer, but I'm still wearing a mask everywhere I go because I don't want to risk infecting anybody. Still washing my hands a ton, still social distancing. You know, I was walking around being like, I'm immune now, <laughs> right? Like, this is great, I'm immune. But I, don't, but I don't know that I am. I'm super grateful in the end that it was a quote unquote mild case. I was really hesitant to share anything, honestly, with the public. And one of the reasons that I posted on Facebook, there's so much misinformation about what it is to have this and, and what it is to recover from it. So when I did actually test positive, it was like, okay, well now there's there's something I can do, right? I can, I can help educate people and I'm working with the Red Cross to donate my plasma, which means that I maybe potentially will be able to help save lives or help develop a vaccine. It's actually what's helping me the most is just talking to people this way. And it helps me feel like I have some modicum of control. Because <laughs> it's the lack of control that I think is the scariest for everybody. It's the not knowing. Like I wanna do something. I wanna like, if it were a hurricane, I'd be putting plywood over the windows. If it were a flood, I'd be shoveling sand into sandbags. Be smart, be safe. It is very scary and, and people are dying, but we are not all going to die. But if you get it and you have mild to moderate symptoms, it's miserable and it's way worse than the flu. The recovery 
physically and emotionally is brutal and you don't want to get it and you don't want to give it to other people. We need to be diligent about how we interact with the world right now. Take care of our community, take care of our, our world that we live in because when this does settle down, we're all still going to be living here. Thank you so much for talking to us, Todd, and for sharing your experience. Be sure to check out the cover story of Seven Days, which I made a video to accompany. It is about the Downs family in Burlington who all contracted COVID-19. So now we're gonna turn to the internet for some good news. There's all sorts of wonderful things happening in our state. Vermonters are resilient. We've got dance parties, drive-by birthday parties. friend Lowell had a special birthday in Huntington. Happy birthday, Lowell. Tara and Sutton making gowns for hospital workers. I'm gonna show you all how to make cloth gowns. Be on the lookout for bike delivery of Seven Days. You can find out more on the Seven Days Facebook page. And hey, also look for Seven Days newspaper racks in neighborhoods near you. We're making sure that you can get access to all the wonderful news that Seven Days has to offer. Read all about it. Get your papers. I'd like to say thank you to Emily of Von Trapp Flowers for flower bombing my mom for her 86th birthday. And also thank you to Mirabelle's for making cakes for my mom and my sister. I know times are hard. We have been staying home for over a month. It's not easy being separate from a lot of our loved ones, friends and family, but we can connect through the internet and we're doing the right thing. So stay home if you can. Thank you so much to all the essential workers who are out there on the front lines taking care of us and tune in next week because we've got a whole video about them. Take care everyone. Vermont strong. We got this. Mwah. Take care of our communities. You know, we've been ordering takeout so much. <laughs> It's expensive and I'm getting fat, but we, but we, we've been trying to support the restaurants, you know, watch your friends play music on Facebook. And if you can throw some money into the tip jar.